Right. So uh, yesterday we discussed about uh, the agenda points in reference to the understanding over the importance of architecture. Whenever we develop different different applications, all that. Yes. At the same time, we have discussed even about uh, enterprise and solution. Of course, that is something uh, on a high level note I have explained with you, followed by uh, the kind of uh, differences we see from cloud and DevOps terminologies. Okay. At the same time, uh, importance of governance structure, all this, right? So, this is what generally the agenda point. Now, when we try to understand the solution architecture for any of the application, because developing solutions for any requirements of the customer, by understanding the multiple aspects is essentially required, because this is not something we'll be focusing on functional and non-functional, especially when we are moving towards the solution architecture role, we must be knowing about few different points which are essentially required when we are working on the architecture. So what is that I'm going to explain you now and whatever I may explaining now about the differences of architectures what we have. Here you can see this is where okay. generally the differences of architectures what is that we have because there are a lot of architectures which are available in the field of applications, whatever we develop. So being into a solution, developing a solution architecture, it is always important for us to understand the perceptions of the architectures, right? So normally the perceptions of architecture this is nothing to do with technology and domain Ashwarya, whatever I'm explaining to you. Okay. So when it comes to the perception of architectures, what is that we develop will be categorized into four different parts. There are four different parts of perceptions, which normally we consider because multiple people will be involved because solution architect might be as one person. But apart from solution architect, even we can see people, whoever is having knowledge over the business will also be called as business architects. Okay, business architects, enterprise architects, even when we are working on some projects relating to data analysis and data management and all, we call it as data architects. At the same time, people who are working on applications and all, those people we call it as application architects. Right, so this is how generally the differences, what is that we see. Now, okay. this usually will be categorized into four different parts. The first one is called business focus or business perception. Okay, that is one area because when we want to provide the solutions, the so first of all, understanding focus towards the business area is required. So business means what kind of domain or as well as the business model which customer is belongs to let's say we are developing an application for a financial institution or a bank one must have a clear understanding over the structure of the business process followed by the kind of rules and regulations whatever they follow all them. this is where generally the business process will be confined to so business focus, because why business focus we have taken? Because whatever the solution are we developing, end of the day, make sure it must reach us to the goal and vision of the organization. Understood, Aishwarya. Okay. Yeah, now, yes. for example, if you have taken, uh, let's say, for example, we are developing a core banking application. Let's say, I'm just taking some example to you so that you will be understood. Let's say we are going to develop a core banking application for a financial institution. Now, from the solution perspective, from the technical, we being a technical people, what is that we see? 
we always see from the infrastructure point of view what what kind of infrastructure customer has what infrastructure is really possible is really required for you to develop this core banking application which technologies are something essentially important for us to use so this sort of understanding usually we keep into consideration but apart from that what is needed so when being a developer now here is a question to you if you can say let's say you are a developer wherein you develop code for the project wherein testing team takes care of testing end of the day you deliver and release the partial yes. to the customer right? that is what generally we do now from the personal person from the technical point of view can you tell me mm -hmm. so when customer will when customer will be happy okay when customer uh, will be happy if you let let me let me repeat this point again okay so that you can answer me later now okay for example you are in a you are a technical team combining user interface design team or uh, development team right so testing right so database etc all that now you guys have developed some portion of work wherein you have delivered this to the customer when customer acceptance positively you get on what basis you get that what was the parameter you need to focus on okay so there could be many things first of all uh, how much time it is consuming how is the performance how much load it is able to uh, sustain uh, and the quality of the code if it is a app like how quick the app is so there could be multiple things and how is the uh, user easeability how is it how the ui is user friendly so there could be multiple things which will make customer happy okay so whatever the information you have given me now this information is something majorly confined to non functional area am i right you said that yes yes so this is to make effective use of application whatever the aspects you have mentioned so far are required accepted your answer but if you have seen the real intention you must understand as long as if you if customer has not reach to an extent possible whatever the business goals and objectives they have yes yeah. that business goals and objectives must attain your application then only customer will be happy Am yes right? the basic requirement is like uh, it the the code and the software should be uh, uh, have integral code and whatever uh, whatever the logics are there that should be correct like if a person is withdrawing at one at the same time other person is uh, depositing the money so the balance and the the basic logic should be correct like in, it should not fail in any certain scenarios so this I mean, is if i talk about yes this is from the technical point of view you have yes. mentioned am i right yes but point to be noted we should understand it's not only about the technical aspect we need to know about the business aspect first okay? okay i'll give you an example to you let's say xyz is a financial institution they have an existing core banking application please again repeat i'm repeating xyz is a yeah. financial institution they have an existing core banking application which they were using since ages a long time yeah. now they were confined their services of financial institution by taking deposits providing loans and all they were they are confined only to this area till now now their business target is to enter into the new avenues of the business lines in the financial institution something like portfolio management or they move or they want to move towards investment related stuff right mergers and acquisitions or credit card fraud detections so these are the areas lines of services which they want to enter in 
Now, by keeping view into an account, they want to enhance their application to the next level. So for that, there is some X amount of budget they have allocated. Okay. Now, whatever the budget they have allocated, whatever the solution you have given, that must be satisfied by a customer based on the kind of budget what they have mentioned here. Am I right or not? Yes. Aishwarya, right? So, yes. when your application is successful, technically speaking, whatever the aspects you are mentioned, either it can be a functional level or it can be a non-functional level, those are all accepted, agreed. But whatever that focus we need to understand initially to start with is also a business focus. Okay, business focus. What is business focus? Because every organization will have vision. Second, mission statement. Objectives and goals. Clear, Aishwarya? Right or wrong? Yes. So, the, assume that you are developing a core banking application or you are enhancing core banking application to the next level. This is what your requirement from the customer side. For what reason they were expecting? They want to attain by reaching the goal and vision of the organizations. Then only whatever the investment they are making, return of investment will be successful to them. As long as being a technical team, Combining with functional business teams, if you have not addressed this problem, what will happen? Even though technically your application was on par to the excellency, it doesn't have any value. Do you agree on this? Clear or not? Yes. Agreed or not? Right? Yes. yes. Now, vision. Vision means what they want to be in future this is what we call it as vision for any organization okay first point second the next one is called mission statement to reach this vision what is our plan of action or approach Understood? Clear? I show you. Yes. Yes. Right? These two things, because whatever you have explained so far were from the technical point of view. But apart from the technical point of view, there is another point of view we need to understand is a business point, business focused. Right? So, we need to understand the vision. We need to understand the mission statement as well. At the same time, we must be knowing about the objectives and goals of the business. Objectives and goals are almost one the same. You don't see much difference between these two. But these objectives and goals are divided into two different parts. One is long term. Second is short term. Understood, Aishwarya, right? Yes. One is long term objectives and goals. Second is short-term objectives and goals. Long-term objectives and goals assume that they want to enter into the new lines of business in coming next four or five years. That is, that is where generally their business goals and objectives are. To reach those business goals and objectives in long run, what is that they want to know? They, and they have to understand the short-term benefits and they need to reach the short-term goals slowly. Let's say, for example, they have a plan for one year. There will be a, um, what I can say, there will be an, uh, milestones which normally we keep. For example, we are working on the projects. What is that we do? We keep milestones, right? For example, if the project yes. will be delivered in one year time, what usually whenever the project planning we do, what is that we do? We keep some milestones, right or not, right? First two months, yes. what is that we want to achieve? After two, three months, what is that we want to achieve? So based on the milestones, whatever the work progress we do and all everything will be depending on it. This is interconnected. Am I right or not? Yes. Clear? Yes or no? 
So, when we are trying to understand the solution for any of the customer, it's always to it is always important for us to understand the business perspective as well. This is where generally this business architecture come into picture. As far as the different architecture itself is concerned, business perspective is all about. Now, when we're talking about business architecture, right? So majorly this business architecture represents individual business activities and as well as process of the enterprise, irrespective of the kind of roles, what is that they want to perform. But when it comes to the business architecture, this is not only the thing we focus more on, but also there are some common elements which we have to be focused. Now, when you talk about, when you try to understand the business architecture here, we need to understand the detailed understanding over the business architecture first. Now, okay. when we talk about business architecture, these are the areas we have to be focused more on. Your screen sharing is stopped. One minute. Sorry. Is it is it audible? Is it visible now? Yes. Right. So when we talk about this, right? So whenever we are talking about this, right? So whenever we are talking about this part, right? So whenever we are talking about this area, right? So this enterprise architecture area, all that, right? This business architecture area. First of all, we need to know about what are all the elements which are involved in the business architecture. That sort of knowledge is required. Now, business architecture, this is what generally the business architecture stands for. You can see here, you can see the screen. Can you see the screen now? Is it visible? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this is what generally the business architecture is. Business architecture is being categorized into multiple parts. Let me give you an example from the financial institution's point of view, because financial institution, nothing but a bank, right? So let me take those example into consideration. Now, if you want to understand about the business architecture, the very first thing we must be knowing about the customer competitors and partner parameter customer partners and as well as the competitors means whichever the customer and whoever the customer and what are the solutions are we going to provide being into understanding over the business architecture it is always important for us to know about what kind of customers that existing organization as well as enterprise has at the same time who are partnering with this organization at the same time we need to know about the competitors so that you will be knowing about SWOT analysis. What is SWOT analysis? SWOT analysis trans stands for strength, weakness, opportunity and threat. Right. So where the organization strong is at, where the existing weakness was existed as of now, what opportunities they may re receive in near future and what are the possible threats they may be received in future and how to handle all this. This is where when we are trying to understand about the business architecture, we need to understand about this part first. Clear to you, Aishwarya? Right? Yes. Next. You must be knowing about, we must be knowing about the capabilities. What is meant by capability? Capability, nothing but business capability. Understood. Capability, nothing but business okay. capabilities. What are the business capabilities that our existing organization is prevailed with or it existed with? Next, we must be knowing about the policies, rules and regulations of the organization. Because if you remember yesterday, when I discussed about the regulatory aspects of application development, this point I was mentioned, if you remember or not. Yes, yes, I remember. So the policies, rules and regulations of the organization are very important. I'll give you an example for this. Let's say, for example, we are working for healthcare applications. 
I think I'm not sure whether you are you are, you had an knowledge or healthcare applications. Sorry for that. But still, let me give you an example so that you can understand well. Yeah. Whenever we works on the healthcare applications, the fundamental rule of healthcare application is to protect the health information of the individuals. Okay, protection of the health information of each and every individual is the highest priority. So for that, there is a law which is there in the got in US in US healthcare system. In reference to US healthcare system, I am explaining this to you. In US healthcare system, there is a law which is called HIPAA, which is called HIPAA. HIPAA. What is HIPAA stands for? Health Insurance <coughs> Portability and Accountability Act. This is what generally HIPAA law is all about. So what this HIPAA law says, this HIPAA law says this is, whoever is the player will be involved in the field of healthcare. Normally in healthcare, there are two players. One is provider, second is a payer. Who is provider? Provider nothing but... Hospitals. Yes, absolutely. Great. Right. So hospitals, healthcare organizations, all that. Second payer. Payer nothing but patients. Insurance companies. Okay. Insurance companies. At the same time, uh, CMS. CMS departments. Payer means insurance company who is paying claim amount. Who is going to play a okay, paying a claim amount in the healthcare? Let's say a person is having a health insurance policy. He has undergone the treatment in the hospital. And whatever the expenses incurred as far as the treatment in the hospital itself is concerned, who will reimburse the money? Uh, health the insurance, insurance company. company will pay. Am I right? Yes. It can be uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, ex example I'm saying, okay. Or else it can be Cigna TTK, right? So these are the different, different health insurance companies. So these people will pay the reimbursement. This is where generally we call the payer. Payer call the hum. Okay. These okay. people we call as payers. Next one more is called CMS. What is CMS stands for? CMS stands for Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Because yesterday, if you remember, I told you, when you are working on the U.S. healthcare system, the healthcare programs in U.S. are categorized into two different parts. One is Medicare, second is Medicaid, right? Two different policies. Medicare is a kind of policy especially will be given to the people Whoever are the citizens of U.S. This is something mandatory for all the citizens of U.S. And whatever the benefits which is which will come from this health care, health, uh, this Medicare and all everything are common for everyone. Now, when it comes to Medicaid, Medicaid is a plan which is exclusively designed for low income group people and disabled people which will be organized by the state governments funded by the federal government. But whereas when it comes to the Medicare is completely funded by the organized and managed by the federal government, right? This is the difference. So from the organization point of view, whatever the reimbursements and all everything will be done by CMS. This is what we call it as center for Medicare and Medicaid services. Understood? Uh, yeah. Aishwarya, right? Yes. Now, there is a HIPAA law. What this HIPAA law says? This HIPAA law says that whatever the health information of an individual should not be exposed outside. Without his consent, his health information should not be given outside. So, there is a law 
In this law, there is an encryption format. Normally, whatever the transactions we do, whatever the treatment we will be providing to the patient, and whatever the amount of billing we are going to mention for a particular procedure, medical procedure or uh, a surgery procedure we have and we have uh, done for a particular patient. This information will be updated based on the code numbers, not based on the treatment, whatever we have given. We don't write it directly. What is that we do? We write it in a form of code number. Understood? Clear? Aishwarya, right? Yes. Yes. So, this is where generally these policies, rules and regulations come into picture. So, when we are trying to understand about the solution for the customer, apart from the functional and non-functional requirements, of course, functional and non-functional requirements comes after once we have identified the business requirements, when this we translated into the technical requirements and all, these are all will come. But if you want to make these more successful and if you want to make it more 100% successful, what is that we require? First of all, you should have a complete understanding over the policies, rules and regulations of the organization apart from the capabilities, etc. Clear to you now? Understood? Yes, sir. Yes. Clear to you? Yes, yes. Right. So, policies, rules and regulations is one of the core and prominent element we have to be good with. Next, we must be knowing about vision, strategies and tactics. That's what I have said some time back to you because every organization is being connected with vision. They have their own vision statement. They have, so they have, they have their own business goals and objectives which they want to achieve. At the same time, Every organization will have a strategy, strategy of performing their business. If they want to implement that strategy, there is a tactics behind. Understood? Clear? Yes. This is also we need to understand from the business architecture point of view. Next, we must be knowing about the organization. This is a common point because which organization are we providing solution? And is there any other information else we want to collect with? And what kind of products and services this organization is performing? Because whatever the line of business these people were belongs to, we must be knowing about the products and services also. At the same time, if they are finding out or if they are performing any initiatives and as less projects, that will be taken into consideration over here. At the same time, value streaming, business activity value stream mapping has to be understood. At the same time, to perform this value stream mapping as well as business process and all, in order to identify the impact of their business process and performances, what kind of metrics and measurements to be taken into an account, followed by the decisions and events. So, all these things are comes under business architecture. Clear to you now? Understood? Yes. Understood or not? Right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, when we are trying to understand about the business perspective of any architecture, business focused area, understanding over the business architecture is one of the key elements. But, if you want to understand, generally, if you want to know about the business architecture or something like, wherein the very first thing on a high level note, we need to understand the enterprise architecture. This is one of the core element we need to focus on. First is enterprise architecture, it means knowing about the entire structure of the organization is what we call it as enterprise architecture stands for. Technically, whenever we want to implement this enterprise architecture in application development, usually since a really long time, even we have, we have used this TOGAP and all, everything almost, uh, I can say, 13, 14 years back. Right? So 13, 14 years back, it was there, existed. Of course, you know, TOGAP, uh, you know about Jackman framework, which was there for the last 
uh, last more than 15 years plus. Jackman framework. You know that. Right? I have heard the name, but uh, don't know much about it. I'll, I'll explain that later. I'll explain. Uh, no worries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when we are trying to understand about enterprise architecture and all, there are different frameworks we use in the field of application development. The prominent ones I am writing here, one is about TOGAF and second is Jackman framework. Sorry. Jackman framework. Right? These are the two different frameworks which normally we use when we try to understand about enterprise architecture. But when we try to understand about enterprise architecture, enterprise architecture is combined as well as the perspective of architecture and in, in reference to the enterprise architecture is divided into four different parts. Because if you want to know about enterprise architecture, we must be knowing about four things. The first one about business architecture. This is what I just told you, right? What is business architecture? Yes. I told you, I think, hope you understood, right? What is that? Yes. So the first one is about business architecture. Yeah business architecture. Second one, we call it as application architecture. Third one is called data architecture. Fourth one is called technology architecture. Understood, Aishwarya, clear or not? Yes. Right? So when we are trying to understand about the enterprise architecture, enterprise architecture is confined and I, I don't say confined, sorry to use this word. Enterprise architecture is combined with four things. One is business architecture, second application architecture, third one is called data architecture, the fourth one is called technology architecture. So what business architecture, business architecture I already mentioned and I have shown the diagram to you. It majorly also, okay, also. Also, it majorly represents individual business activities and process of the whole enterprise. Okay, let's say, let me give you an example from the banking perspective. So for what purpose core banking application is being used? Core banking is an application which will be used to manage back-end operations of the organizations. Do you agree on that? Yes, sir. Yes. Right, so first of all, if you want to understand about the core banking application followed by the technical requirements, whatever you want to develop, prior to that, what is that you need to understand? Being a business fun technical person, what is that you need to understand? If you want to develop a core banking application, let me put you this way. Before you are getting into functional requirements, before you are getting into non-functional requirements, all that, what is the first thing being a team member? Right, either you can be a, you 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 may be a technical person or a non-technical uh, individual when we are working on the team. Mm. First of all, what is that we want to know? Uh, for business architecture, we need to know like what who are our customers and what is the main requirement and like similar like our product. What all products are already available in the market? First of all, we must be knowing about end users. Yes. Am I right? Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. First of all, we must be knowing about end users. Who are our end users? Yeah. Who are our end users? end users? Okay. Now, these end users or users, whatever it is, or business users, whatever it is, this will be categorized into two different parts. One is external users. Second is internal users. Okay, I'll give you an example. Let's say, for example, you are developing a core banking application. 
This is an application used within the organization. Am I right? Okay. Within the organization. Okay. Who are users here? Whoever is managing okay. the backend operations of a financial institution, they are the users. Am I right? Yeah. Now, again, one more example. Let's say that you are developing an online banking application. Who are users? I mean, all the normal customers are Absolutely. external users as a user. Right. So, depends on the type of application we are developing. Depends on the kind of project we are taking into account. Users will vary. Am I right? Yes. Yes, sir. Right. So, external users means people who are not belongs to the particular territory. Okay. Internal users means people who are working on within the organization. Am I right or not? Right? Yeah. So, when we try to understand the business architecture for any of the application to understand from the functional side perspective, it is always important for us to know about the kind of business activities what these individuals are about to perform so that whose involvement will be more, whose involvement will be less, you will be knowing. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Now, that's the reason why these people, usually we call it as stakeholders. We call it as okay. stakeholders whoever the individuals are we talking about, these stakeholders, these people we call it as stakeholders because normally our perception is the meeting is about to be ended. Please join again. Okay. Please do remember. Please join again. Log off and okay. log in again, please. Okay. 